Welcome to another episode of A Director's Take. Today, we're going to talk about the three A's of movement, something that every director not only needs to know, but needs to be able to master. Let's get started. The three A's of movement are pretty much the same as having a beginning, a middle, and an end to a story, but a little bit different. Because in this case, we're not talking about, is there a beginning to the information coming across? What is the middle looking like? Is it being well-developed? And, oh, do we appreciate the ending? No, instead, with the three A's of movement, we're looking at something slightly different. We're looking at the pacing and the pulse of the story as well. So let's get started into this so we can talk through how it's going to be set up and work. So the first A in movement is all about the anticipation. That's right. You want the audience to get an idea of where things are going to head, and they're wanting to stay invested in the scene to see how it plays out. Now, keep in mind, we're not talking about, you know, what so much plays out, but how it plays out. For instance, if you have a murder mystery that you're working on, <laughs> the odds are people are going to speculate. They're going to narrow down who the suspects are and so on. Will they get away with it? Will they not get away with it? The key here isn't who is guilty, but how are they going to get caught? Or how does things line up to prove their guilt or their innocence, depending on the story itself. So let's do a visual here to see if this makes a little bit more sense for you. This picture here on this side of me <laughs> is a person who is reaching to grab something. And the reason I use this picture is just to create in your mind the idea that the audience needs to think, is he going to reach it and get it, or is he not going to get it? But more importantly, what is he going to do with it? Is he going to pull it in close and take a smell of it? Is he going to pluck it and say, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me not? We don't know what kind of thing is going to happen. We just know that there is a goal here. The anticipation is all about taking the goal, allowing the audience to speculate on where this is going to head, and then taking them on a journey to see if it's going to play out the way they think, or if it's going to have a surprise change or ending to it. Next, we get to the action itself. Now, the action takes up the bulk of the story or the, of the scene. So, for instance, if you have, let's say, a one-minute scene, 60-second scene, and you divide that up, you wouldn't necessarily have 20 seconds of anticipation, 20 seconds of action, and then 20 seconds of the last category, which I haven't talked about yet. I'll give you a hint. It's called the aftermath. <laughs> you wouldn't just evenly, easy, evenly divide it. You might take... 25% for the anticipation, 50% for the action so that you can develop and see what plays out, and then 25% to resolve it all or to see what the consequences are of, of the aftermath. But the point of the action is to get the person invested, the audience invested, to try and figure out what's coming next. How is this going to unfold? That's the key. Anticipation is about, hmm, how is that going to work? Are they going to get that or not get that? The action is about, oh my gosh, there's things blocking their way, stopping them from getting there. Are they going to take the right action or the set of actions to be able to overcome it and get to that object? So going back to the picture routine over here, we have... We have the action of the person was reaching. Remember, that was the anticipation. We didn't know if they were going to pluck the petals to smell it or to do whatever. But in this case, it was to break the stem, 
so that they could take the flower. Now, again, there's lots of ways of guessing how it's going to play out, but the audience needs to have various things happening in their mind for them to try and decide where is this headed and is it worth continuing to watch to see how it does play out. So as I mentioned a, a moment ago, the aftermath is the part that uh, is kind of the end of the scene itself. So after the action, the action was snapping off the rose or the flower. Now we don't know what's going to happen next, do we? What is the aftermath? What is the consequence? What is the conflict that rises as a result of the action? See, one of the things that people really like about story is when somebody has to make a decision based on their decision, there's ramifications and they have to now figure out how to make sure those ramifications lean to the positive and not the crisis mode <laughs> or the negative. I use another uh, format instead of the three A's of anticipation, action, and aftermath. I sometimes talk about the GAC, the G-A-C, the goal. What is the main character's goal to drive that anticipation for the audience? What is the action they take, which is the same as the action taken in the three A's? And then the C stands for conflict or conclusion or whatever it might be that you're going to raise for the heightening part of the scene. In the case of an aftermath, we don't know necessarily how it's going to turn out, but we do with the flower. Take a look. Oh, the flower is now dead and wilting because it was broken from its stem and it doesn't get any nutrients anymore. <laughs> You get the idea. <laughs> the, the bottom line here is that whatever, however you want the story to play out, you need to make that decision from a director's perspective. You have to say to yourself, what is that main character's goal? And how can I use it to drive the audience's anticipation to need to see the rest of the scene? What action is the main character going to take based on the decision and their philosophy at that moment or whatever value system you're going to be depicting in your story? What is the action that's going to be taken? And that's the same whether it's the three A's of story or it's the GAC principles. doesn't matter. Same thing. It's always action. One of the things, just a side note, that is always funny to me is that a lot of people like to take books and turn them into films. And they're like, oh, the book was better. <laughs> the reason is, is because in most books, a lot of what goes on in the head is what is so appreciated because of the feelings and the emotions. And it's not necessarily the actions, but it's the action that actually drives the plot line and the story itself. So it has to be an action. It's got to be action driven. You can have a subplot that has the emotions and you can have the actions be decisions that create emotions as the aftermath. But it has to be action regardless. And then, of course, the third point is the aftermath. We're in the GAC principles, it's the conflict or the conclusion or whatever crisis you want to bring up. The fact is there has to be some kind of reaction. And you might have noticed that with this picture here, we're talking about an emotion on that person's face because their decision to pick the flower was about how the flower made them feel, and then they realized they killed the flower by snapping off the stem. So there's a consequence in the emotion that needs to be considered. So the whole thing has to drive the story forward. It has to give some kind of emotional element to the audience. But the first emotion is for them to have anticipation 
Then they have to see what the action plays out as. And then the aftermath. Does conflict come out of it? Does consequences come out of it? What are the consequences of the action? That's what you have to have in the aftermath. The consequences. It might be new conflict that continues to drive the story to the next scene. It might be a bad thing, like in this case, the flower having died. <laughs> Although it wouldn't happen as fast as it did in these pictures, but you get the idea. So think of it as uh, the three A's of movement and that movement being of story and physicality because action is always the core of it all. So whatever scene you have, whether it's 30 seconds long or four minutes long, you have to be able to generate within the audience every single scene, some form of anticipation, some kind of action has to be taken and there's got to be an aftermath. There's got to be consequences or conflict or something coming out of it to drive the people to the next scene. You have to keep the audience intact. Why? Because our attention span is this big these days and you need that in every scene to keep people watching the show. Well, I hope that has helped a little bit. Uh, the fact is, as a director, so many times we just look at the script and we don't tear it down and break it down to understand, do we have the things we need in each scene? But as a director, you're responsible to do that. So until next time, have a great day looking at your scripts and double checking for the three A's. Bye-bye.